I gave my $10 million inheritance to my daughter and now my angry fiance wants to talk. Hey babe, I noticed you gave all your money to your daughter. Why don't you just send it all to me? I, female 28, had my daughter, female nine, while still in college. I was ashamed to admit I don't know who the dad is. It was a drunken party mishap. My parents disowned me and sympathizing with my plight, my grandpa took me in. He had a bad relationship with my dad. My grandpa died two years ago, leaving me his entire estate. And he was kind of rich. I started dating my fiance, Max, male 35, around four years back. He has two kids, female six and male 10. He has full-time custody of them as well. Their mom married someone else and moved across the country. She pays child support, but makes no effort to contact them or visit them. Yikes. Mom of the year award. We have lived together for over a year now and everyone gets along pretty well. We stay at the house. My grandfather left me and split all bills and expenses 50-50, but keep the rest of the finances separate. And then he popped the question two months ago and I said yes. Woo! Ooh, congrats, OP. Everything's hunky-dory, fine and dandy. Until. For now. A few weeks ago, we had a minor fight. My daughter's birthday is coming up, and I wanted to gift her a pony. <laughs> like a whole ass pony? Bro, that sounds lit. That's some estate money right there. That's some estate money. Oh, yeah. She's been learning to ride for a few years now and really wants one. When I mentioned this to Max in passing conversation, he got mad at wasting our money on stupid gifts like this. I told him I am not taking anything out of our budget and just buying it out of my money. He said then I should buy his kids ponies too to make it fair. Yeah, everyone gets a pony. That's how it works. I said, sure, let's split the expense. He told me I should buy it myself since I am rich and it is my decision to buy my daughter a pony in the first place. That he is trying to make it equal for all kids in the household and he doesn't have the money to waste like this. I got his point, but I also felt that he would want me to make everything equal with his kids too. I get they will be my kids too and I should not treat them differently. But I also felt like my daughter should not have to split her generational wealth. It's not mine. It's my grandpa's. And he loved her. He left it to me believing I would pass it on to her. So I made a trust fund transferring 50% of assets I inherited into that. It has rules regarding reasons I can make withdrawal out of like education and separate living allowance based on age, money for marriage, for house. And then the entire balance is made available at 30. That's actually really smart. That is genius. I, that's maybe one of the better setups we've seen. Yeah. I mean, I do see where, where it's like if you're getting married and you have kids, like you want the whole family to be like a familial unit and you don't want one parent to, to like show favor of one kid. You want it to be a whole thing. It is tricky. I don't really know what is like the usual of that. Yeah. Like I feel like usually examples we find in these stories is like super egregious. This one is a lot more in the gray area. It's not like the husband is like, give me a pony. He's like, no, no, like, like all the kids should have ponies so they feel included. Which if you think about like a vacation, right? If OP was like, yo, fiance, daughter, let's all go on a vacation. And the husband's well, like, what about paying for them? It's like, oh, well, those are your children. Like in that scenario, it, it feels like, yeah, should if you're going to do the vacation, shouldn't you bring everyone? Like I do see it from both sides. I think I'm leaning a little bit more towards everyone getting a pony. But do the other kids even want a pony? You know, it's definitely a little dicey, I would say. For the people who have kids kids or have married into a family that have kids and like you both have a set of kids. I would love to know what your thoughts are. This is not a situation I have dealt with before, but let's keep going. I set up another trust fund for myself, putting 30% of assets into it with yearly allowance and then to dissolve after 50, hoping to retire then. The balance 20% and then another 20% is mostly the house, land and emergency funds. I did it so whatever income I earn, I will be able to make it equally split within kids, but inheritance will stay intact for my daughter's future without having to be split or used for my stepkids. My fiance found out about this a couple of days ago. He saw some related papers in my drawer. He was really mad at cutting him and his kids out. He said if I was marrying him, we would be sharing all assets and finances, which is not necessarily true. Like, I mean, like that's the whole reason prenups exist. Yes. It's not a given. Like I, that feels less of a given where it's like, this is something we have to agree upon, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. But yeah, it's not a given. So you can't just 
just say, I demand. It's a conversation, dude. He said that it's not fair for me to keep 90% of my wealth just to myself and my kid when he is sharing all of his with us. I said I was sharing everything I make too, just the inheritance is kept aside. He is not bringing any inheritance in the union either. He said that's because he has none and it's incredibly selfish of me to not share, to lock it away. That with this, my daughter will live a luxurious life while his kids will have an average life only since there is no way we can afford all of that with our income only. I said generational wealth is separate and it should go to the biological family. He called me an asshole for discriminating and depriving his kids of an equally good life. So am I the asshole? This is so complex. I want to know what you guys think in the comments. But John, like, what what are your initial thoughts here? I think that OP is definitely being smart about it. Uh, I I do I do appreciate the effort in you know like oh I will still split a hundred percent of like the income that I earn. I think the kicker here, and correct me if I'm wrong, the grandfather wanted it passed to OP to then pass to OP's child, the biological grandchild, right? I don't think that's specified in the will. I think what's specified in the will is he's giving it to. OP, but he's also believing that it will be passed down to his daughter. That might be an implied thing, but if he right. explicitly said that, then I think like something that we've said in the past is like the person who is giving the money, I think has a lot of say and almost like complete say in how that money is transferred and who it's transferred to. And I think upon accepting that gift, that should be respected. There's no real right answer. It's just like these are different options and relationship styles, you know? potential solution and roast me in the comments if if I'm a little bit off but what if a portion of that if it's really so large like going on family vacations getting those gifts and whatnot that you set aside for all of the children while they are growing up but as far as like education full inheritance all of that stuff when they're adults it's like hey I will give them all great equal childhood but adulthood education feels like important yeah I feel like they should have have access to equal education if it's education to be equal you'd have to pay for all of the kids education which maybe that's a lot i don't know i feel like that would make sense but i would love to know from everyone else and there is a fat juicy update that we're going to get into right now let's do it i know this is quick but i am someone who always acts quickly so here is the update i had a much needed conversation with max we're going by names now y'all this man is being called out yeah son i showed him the post replies advices experiences and he it looked defeated to see this. At the core, there were two issues. How much do I trust him? And how do we handle finances moving forward? Yeah, because it's a lot <laughs> to figure out. Also, John, just quick reminder of the whole situation, right? Yeah. Thank you. So we have a woman marrying man. Woman just had like a bunch of inheritance. She gave 50% to her daughter, 30% to herself and 20% for house expenses. And the other guy was like, you should buy my kids a pony too. Yeah, got it. Cool. He told me he was ready to sign a prenup before I even asked if that would alleviate my worries. He said all he wants to have is everyone in the household to feel equal, to not make his kids feel resentful, to make it fair to everyone. I understood that. The fact is, there is no way it can be made fair to everyone. If I want to give my daughter the best of everything, I should give same to his kids too. But that is not always possible, even with our combined incomes. For example, if her love for riding stays, both me and her would prefer she attend a private school providing equestrian sports. Bruh, this is rich, rich, bro. What are we doing here? Who's using that? That's crazy. Okay. Tuition for that and related costs can be availed from her trust, but we would not be able to afford to pay tuition for his kids out of our combined income. Trust is already set up and even I cannot withdraw money for their tuition. Yes, it's her money, but in a relationship where you're going to get married, I feel like that's that's something you should talk about, right? Because it's not always 100% of the time, but a lot of the times there is intermingling of funds. And if it was income, OP probably would be sharing it more, right? So it is in this really weird gray area. I feel like the whole splitting, putting it very quickly that day into all of these different funds feels a little rash, right? It would cause me some like, could you sit down and walk me through why this was happening and why it had to happen with 
within 24 hours, within one business day. Again, it is her money for sure. Yes. I just think if you're going to be getting married to someone, like these are things that you should talk about before doing. Yeah. At a minimum, like over communication. I would love to know what everyone else thinks. Like, do you think if you have an inheritance, you could do whatever you want with it and you don't have to tell your partner? Or do you think part of getting married is being able to be transparent with your finances, even if on that particular part of your finances, you have final say? I would love to know what you guys think. Me too. Even if I could, I would be reducing my retirement funds or my daughter's inheritance. Same goes for car, tuition funds, and all other expenses my daughter will have covered. But even with our incomes, we can't give equally to Max's kids. Further, marriage is a big risk. Even with a prenup, if he takes on debt during the course of our marriage, I would also be liable. A lot of the comments have instilled a lot of fear in me. I'm also worried about the resentment finance is going to build. I love Max. I really do. But I love my daughter a million times more. She is my life. I have to accept that her future and opportunities are more important to me than a marriage, at least for the next nine years. Who am I kidding till my daughter can fully be independent? And I cannot fault him for wanting the same for his kids. He is just being a dad, but I cannot take away from my daughter to give to his kids. I can only give equal love and care to them, equal attention. Financially, we are just not compatible. You're too poor, bro. <laughs> Yes. Wow. <laughs> Financially, we're not compatible, Jeremy. My daughter wants to go to equestrian school, and I simply could not afford equestrian school for all of your rabble-rousing children. Your children want to learn to become a chef, get their hands dirty and all this muck? No, never. Bro, we're not financially compatible. Ah, I don't know, man. Right, right. A little dicey. I think she's losing us. They were being too harsh. That seems ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. I would not put it like that. Long story short, I gave back my ring. Engagement and marriage is off the table for now. After all, there is no real necessity to get married. We both are sad about this turn but the fact he did not kick up a fuss is a bit reassuring. I really do believe our companionship is just as valuable to him as me. Okay, so they're not breaking up. Just that we are also parents who want the best for our children. We don't know where a relationship is going. I would still like him to be in my life, but he is also free to leave and find another person. I did not ask him to leave and he is staying for now. I will try to keep normal stuff equal between all, whatever I can do out of my income. My daughter is still getting a pony. It's a gift from her great grandpa after all. I would not compromise her life and choices. My grandpa took me in for her sake. He left it all to me for her. I cannot compromise on that. And there is no need for three ponies. Neither of his kids know or has shown any interest in riding, which I agree with that you don't need to get three ponies. If they want one after seeing my daughter with hers, we will be getting them riding lessons and they can share. They will be getting the best birthday presents we can afford that aligns with their interests for their birthdays if Max sticks around till then. I will also be protecting the house and land as well. He cannot make claims on it as far as I know, but I will still be discussing it with my lawyer. Thank you for helping me see what I refuse to. Love had me blind. We should read some of these comments, right? Yeah, please. First, you're just randomly buying your child a pony. Who does that? One who has enough money to afford that a daughter obsessed with riding and ponies. Also, who just sets up multiple trusts in a few weeks? I do. I mean, my team did. I'm sorry if it takes you too long. Also, why do you think the retirement age is 78? OP, I want to retire at 50, as in 50 years old, not 50 years from now. And then uh, Anna Ferendel says, not the asshole. That's why people get a prenup. I would say the only mistake in this was not considering you might want more kids. So they should, regardless of their father, have the same funding. I had a complication during, and then OP says, I had a complication during childbirth and had my uterus removed. I won't be having any more kids. And then Katie Cruel says, inheritance is legally not split though. If you two divorce, they wouldn't include your inheritance in the proceedings. It would all revert to you. So this we're sharing everything mentality has when he's already getting free housing from you is very convenient, but false. Oh, that's a good point. That's a pretty good point. So basically like inheritance isn't shared between married couples. So that's not up in the court. Like, Hey, I'm going to get half of that. No, it's not. It's, it's completely left out. According to this one comment on this Reddit post. <laughs> yes. So, and the OP says, I think he meant within the marriage, not exactly in divorce contact, which is also why I established the trust. So the money is out of my hands and no one can force me to spend it. Requirements, guilt, nothing would work since money can be withdrawn only in accordance with eligible
multiple causes. Well, that was a doozy, but it seems like it, yeah, it was kind of worked out a bit. They're not getting married, but they're also not breaking up. So that's something. But Sam, there's one thing that might be burning in the minds of our beautiful viewers and that we should ask to them as well. So put your thoughts down in the comments. Is OP the a-hole here? Yeah, I want to know. Pick. We have to pick. I think the a-hole move is setting up all the trust so quickly without like communicating that to her future husband. I feel like that's a really big decision that was made really quickly. But I mean, I guess they're not getting married anymore. But like, especially since it was a point of contention, like I feel like that should be resolved first before making an irreversible decision. Totally. Here's the line. I'm like also a little bit on the side of the a-hole. I honestly don't really care about her having to split it with the husband, which isn't what he was asking for. It's more so the kids and not that the kids have to get everything, but it just creates this weird environment of like giving these extravagant gifts and yeah. outside of like, I think stuff in adulthood, it's more so the childhood and like Opie's daughter just going to get extravagant gifts and all these things all the time. And the other two kids are just kind of like left in the dust. Like, I think what it will feel like is like you have your family and I have mine. It just creates that dynamic. Unfortunately, that is the dynamic that is being created. And I think that's probably what Opie wants. Like you have your family, you take care of yours. I'll take care of mine. I'm thinking like if me and my sister, like my sister got everything she wanted and I was not afforded that same luxury, I think there would be resentment that would grow. Right? Growing up as a child, I feel like it'd be hard to help. So curious what everyone else thinks. So put your answers in the comments below. This is a tricky one. This is super complicated. And with that, we should get into the next story. But if you have your own story, you should call us right now. What's the number, John? 440-508-6567. Call right now. You can literally call us and leave a voicemail. It's 440-508-6567. Call us. We might just call you back and interview you on the show. On to the next story. I hid $160,000 from my fiance. She just found out. She is not going to be happy, man. The question is why? That's what we're here to find out. Let's find out. I recently got engaged to my fiance after two years of dating and told her that we should probably start looking at houses. She told me that we didn't have the money for a deposit on a mortgage, but I personally have a lot of money in savings. It's a little bit more than $160,000. My girlfriend was initially just shocked because it's a lot of money for a 24 year old to have saved. That is correct. 24. What were you doing? After a couple of days, she began to be annoyed at me. She felt like I was hiding this from her. I told her that I didn't hide it from her. I was just raised not to talk about personal finances with anyone other than someone you're married to. And I figured engaged is close enough that I'm now happy to talk about it. I also said that I had actually used these savings to help her before. I've paid her rent a few times when she couldn't and paid a couple thousand dollars for her dog to get surgery. She was still quite angry and has been giving me the silent treatment for the past day. He's getting the silent treatment for paying for her rent, her her dog surgery, and just for having a bunch of money in the bank. Like, isn't that like a happy thing? Like, oh shit, we are now richer than I thought we were. There's only one solution to this problem. Problem, Sam. It is a $160,000 check with my name on it and then divorce. Give me all your money and then I'll divorce you. We got it, boys. My parents didn't see the problem. Duh. Her parents understand my perspective, but I think I should have told her when we moved in together last year. None of our friends know because I don't feel comfortable talking about it with them. I've already asked her if we can talk about it when she's ready and she said she'd let me know when she was. I don't think this is relationship ending, but I know she probably probably wants me to admit that I was wrong. I don't think I've done anything wrong, so I'm asking you guys more so out of curiosity for what you think think. I don't think he's done anything wrong. He literally told her when we were about to be married, when the finances are combined. I don't understand what's wrong with that. I think that's fine. Also, the fact that he paid a couple months of rent. He, you know, paid for the dog surgery. What's the deal here? Come on. Yeah. But Sam, we have an update. There's a juicy one. Oh, There's yeah. a juicy one. Get into it. Actually, an update with some comments. Commenter, might she be reacting to having previously thought this past generosity were big sacrifices for him and she's now rethinking these situations and how OP presented them? Okay. OP, my fiance and I have started talking about everything and I'm reading back over this post myself to see what everyone has said. This comment is actually a big part of where I think our communication broke down. When it came to helping her with things, I always told her it wasn't a big deal, which I thought was me telling her I had money and it was 
wasn't harming me financially. She took it as me downplaying to stop her from worrying. I never directly communicated that I wasn't going to be put out by doing those things. And that's 100% on me for being so flippant. Did she want him to be put out? What? There's nothing wrong with more communication, but I, I am still kind of lacking seeing what wrong could have happened from this. You know, like he is more secure than you thought. So was she worried he'd become homeless? Tell me if you think this is dumb in the comments <laughs> right now. Comment dumb. Because I had all the information on my statements, that meant one thing to me, but I entirely failed to consider what it would look like to someone without that information. Another update. My fiance and I have spent the last week talking about this. We started talking about it the day after my post. There was actually a lot to go through because she had a lot of thoughts and feelings. Okay, now I think we're going to get to the bottom of this. When we started talking, I told her about the post very quickly. She was initially put out by me making the post about it, but after I explained that it was more for me to make sure I hadn't done something egregiously wrong and I let her read through it at her own pace that she was more okay with it. Though I did warn her that a lot of comments were making wild assumptions about her. Hey. As Reddit does. After she'd read through the post, we looked at a few comments in my replies that we talked about a little more. The main thing we talked about from the post was the silent treatment. She was very apologetic and let me know that it wasn't her intention to be giving me the silent treatment, but can absolutely see that it would feel like that to me. I just didn't talk to you. I didn't, I didn't know that was the silent treatment. I thought it was the silent delivery. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I thought you would just like understand my body language that everything was okay. Sam, when I say you don't know what I mean? I know what you mean, but we have telepathy. That's true. Not everyone can be telepathic podcast hosts like us. We can't forget that. No, nope, they're not built like us. She said that she was just struggling to parse through a lot of thoughts and emotions. Like I said in a comment, a big part of where our communication broke down was my flippancy when it came to helping her with money previously. To me, it was showing that I was able to do it without hurting myself financially. To her, it was me trying to stop her from worrying. Bro, man's giving her his money and she's upset about him. What? This is ridiculous. Also, I don't think OP should be apologizing for any of this. This is ridiculous. Yeah. To me, I feel like it's like OP goes to Cold Stone, gets like a freaking triple decker, amazing uh, ice cream, brings it home. Hey, honey, I have a great surprise. Here's your favorite treat. And then she's like, but there's no sprinkles. And I am frustrated with that. Yeah. Where's my sprinkles? I'm going to throw this in the trash. I'm still going to actually, I'm going to eat it, but I'm going to make you feel bad about getting it for me. Yikes. Without the information I had, I can definitely see why she thought that. She had always assumed I was only doing a little better than her. This is so lame. I hate his response too. It's like, no, don't give in to this bullshit. This is such bullshit. There were also a bit of feeling bad about herself because of this. She's 26 and felt like because I was much younger and had so much more that she had failed. I could see, okay, like insecurity. Real reason, real reason, insecurity. I reassured her that it wasn't a reflection on her and that I had just been very lucky. She asked me how I got the money and said that she was also concerned <laughs> I had done something illegal to get it. So I broke down for her how I save the money in detail. She also expressed that she already felt unworthy of me because I quote unquote do so much for her. I reassured her that I did those things for her because I loved her and that hadn't changed. I also explained everything she does for me and how to me, I feel like she does so much more for me. Man is the best boyfriend ever. Coming in with all the good stuff. She also worried about the power dynamic that this created. I reassured her I didn't see us as any different and that what was mine, I viewed as hers. She also said she was worried about what else I was hiding from her. <laughs> and I reassured her that I wasn't hiding anything. I told her that she was free to look through anything of mine anytime she wanted. She told me it wasn't necessary and that it was just an emotional concern, not actual distrust. Obviously, a week of reassurance isn't going to solve a lot of these emotions. We both already go to therapy separately, and she's planning on bringing up a lot of this by herself. Self. We also decided that couples therapy would be a good idea, not to repair our relationship because neither of us think it's broken, but to strengthen it and allow us to talk about ways to most effectively communicate with each 
other. Again, I go back to that ice cream analogy. It's like, remember that you like sprinkles and I should have put it on there, but are you really going to be mad that I brought home a triple decker ice cream as a sweet treat surprise? It's just what it really is, is it's born out of insecurity. So what happened is she saw that money and she's like, I am worthless and he is worth $160,000. And now I know how worthless I am by comparison. I thought we were both worthless, but turns out only I am. And that made her feel insecure. I was a mere peasant pushing my orange cart down the street, praying someone would throw a nickel my way. I thought we were both pushing that orange cart, but turned out I was pushing it alone. And you were on top of the oranges taking me for a ride. You were the king and I was the dirty peasant. I think this is uh, just like insecurity showing up. But I would love to know what you guys think. Did OP do anything wrong? I don't think so. But put your answers in the comments if you think OP did. I will say it is kind of a weird gray area for dating couples that it's like, okay, how much of your finances do you share? Because I think generally people have like a decent idea, but don't know the whole thing. Not that it was necessary, yeah. I don't think, in their dating pre-marriage phase. But I've like dated a bunch of rich girls for some reason. And one of the girlfriends that I had said, uh, I'm, like like her fam familial situation came up in terms of finances. And she's like, yeah, I really don't know, but it's somewhere between five and a hundred million. <laughs> And so, like, I think it goes like to show like some people don't even know their finances, too. So it's like they don't even have transparency on it. So like it's I, 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 and I also don't think it's like super important to know. No, I, it's not. It's not a need to know. It is good to communicate financially going into marriage like basically OP was doing. But it's uh, dating. It's different. But let us know what you think in the comments below. Let us know. Put it down and we'll see you soon. And also, if you want to tell us your own story, call us 440-508-6567. Call us right now and uh, we'll read your story and maybe call you back. Love you. Peace.